introduction, so I might as well go ahead and do an introduction myself. Um, I'm Mike Vizzani. I've been developing Ruby for about two and a half years, so still fairly new at it. <clears throat> I studied humanities in college, emphasis in Hong Kong cinema, so awesome. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, funny how that came about. Um, we'll talk later. Um, when I'm not programming in Ruby, I like to garden with my wife and young daughter or go and volunteer on a local farm. And that kind of sums me up in a nutshell. Um, tonight, I accepted the topic of how to learn how to program. And looking online, that provided, like, there, this is a topic that has been covered many times. So I asked myself, well, what can I bring, um, what can I bring to this topic that's kind of my own perspective, my own view? So my talk is officially titled, Learning to Program, or How Peter Cooper Lied to Me. Now, as this talk goes on, We'll see, he didn't really lie to me, but the title of his book is pretty, pretty deceiving. Um, let's start off with the first thing. I had a huge success for my personal programming endeavors recently. I made my first open source commit, which was awesome. And it was even a little bit trivial, but I went on to codetriage.com. And I just started scanning through all the different things that needed help. And I noticed that HTT Party was one of the things that had open issues. So I went over to the gem, um, the GitHub repo for that, started looking through the issues, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff here that I don't even know where to begin with. And then there was one that was a feature request. I read the feature request. It said, I'd like to be able to type double dash V at the command line and get an output of what version of HTTP party is running on my machine. And I said, oh, I already thought it did that. So I went to my terminal, I typed it in, sure enough, no output. OK, cool. Well, let's see what I can do with this. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details. After some failed Google searches, I just said, OK, let's look at the source code and see what this guy is doing. Because he obviously, you can type in double dash help, double dash j. You know, it'll put out different outputs. So I found where that code was at and realized, oh, well, I can create my own definition, double dash v, and move on from there. And after writing tests, they're failing, try to do some other things, failing again, and then finally got them passing. I committed. I submitted a pull request, and 30 minutes later, he merged it into the main branch. And that was awesome. That was one of the best feelings. And it's so now, when you go and you type HTTP party double dash V, that was me. <laughs> Woo! Big, big win right there. That's right. So I tell that story to illustrate a point. And that point is that. As a new programmer or someone who is coming new to programming, small wins are important. Small, quick wins are important. I busted that out in about two hours, and it's because over the last two and a half years, I had developed some habits that allowed me to get continual quick wins to drive me to my end goal. So, why am I qualified to talk about learning how to program? Well, <clears throat> I've read this book. It says, Beginning Ruby, from novice to professional. The implication there seems to be that if I read all the pages of this book, which I did, I will go from novice Ruby developer to professional Ruby developer. OK. I read through all the pages. I got to the end. And I was like, let's write some code. I sit down, and all I can really do is mimic what examples were in the book, which kind of sucks because like I wanted to do some cool things, but I felt like it didn't teach me that in the book. So I was like, Peter Cooper, you lied to me. I can't write programs and I finished your book. I'm not a professional. So that lands me somewhere between don't worry, I've got this and programming like that. And Honestly, most of the time it feels more like that than 
I've got this. Okay. When we talk about quick wins, I like to think of that as a positive feedback loop. Um, a positive feedback loop is a system in which one th A influences B, which goes and influences A, and it just continues and continues and continues. So I'd like to talk about how selecting materials can, you can implement a part of this positive feedback loop into the selecting of your materials that you choose to learn from. Um, okay. When I, here's my dead computer. Uh, when I decided I wanted to do Rails development, I want to bring this in. I went and bought my books. I bought Beginning Ruby, thank you, Peter Cooper. Um, I bought Crafting Rails for Applications, Expert Practices for Everyday Rail Development. Um, I actually haven't read this yet because when I picked it up the first time, I was still very new to Rails and these were advanced concepts. So cool, a book that I've purchased and haven't used yet. Agile Web Development for Rails 4. This one was actually one of the more helpful ones. It was good step through tutorial. Um, the Book of CSS3. A developer's guide to the future of web design. Use that maybe a few times. HTML5 cookbook. Think like a programmer. All the examples are in C++, which I've just really decided I'm not going to pick up right now. PostgreSQL, up and running. I, yeah, I don't think I've used it once. Head first jQuery. This, reading through the first 50 pages or so, allowed me to implement some cool jQuery. This, plus all those up there. Lots of good information. But I overwhelmed myself starting out. And so here's kind of what it, what it was like. OK, um, let's start reading through the HTML5 cookbook. And I'd, I'd read things and I'm like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool. And after learning something, I'd try it out on my own. And I'd try to customize it, and then I'd eventually hit a brick wall. And being new, did not realize the value of Stack Overflow at the time. When I hit those brick walls, my progression stopped. I was like, well, that sucks. I guess I can't continue with that. OK, well, I'll just pick up another book and work through that. And I'd work until I hit another brick wall. Until pretty soon, I had set up for myself four, or five, six brick walls where I felt my progression stop. And as a new developer, I personally believe, as a new developer, when you have those points where progression stops and you don't know where to turn to continue, all motivation is lost and you feel like a failure. And when you fail five or six times with the materials that you've purchased, it's really de just, it's absolutely demoralizing. So, what was the first thing for me that helped me feel successful? Anybody played this online? Excellent, I'm glad to see some hands go up. This does not teach you programming, but it has built into it the positive feedback loop. You start out, you simply have to walk across a room. So you have to write a method definition that tells your little Ruby warrior, hey, check the block in front. If it's, if it's blank, walk. Okay, and then the next level is the same thing, but a little bit more complex. And then the next level, you use the same principles you learned before, and then you implement something more complex. This was so effective at the positive feedback loop method for me that at the end of it, I was like, OK, I don't know how to program, but I have confidence again that I can do something. And I realized three things. For the positive feedback loop to work, something needs to be simple, it needs to be focused, and you need to have some kind of feedback that's readily available. So stage one was simple, it was focused, you weren't trying to do 17 different things, you were trying to do one thing. And when you went wrong, when you did something wrong, it didn't just say, oh, argument error, blah, 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 and like some kind of cryptic error message. It gave 
for a new person, it gave relatively useful immediate feedback. It said, hey, it looked like you were trying to do this thing, but that didn't work. You should go look, look over here and, and read a little bit more about these things to see if you can't come up with a solution. That I really appreciated because I don't think it's helpful. Maybe sometimes it is, but the majority of the time it's not helpful to just hand a new person to programming the answer. They got to work for it. That's when it, it gets logged away in their mind. So Ruby Warrior gave me confidence to reapproach what I was trying to learn in a new light. And that was break things down small so they're simple, focus yourself on what you're trying to work on, and then make sure you have at your disposal a way of getting feedback on what you're working on. If you hit a brick wall, places you can get your questions answered. I think that's just absolutely critical. All right. This is also a pretty universal bit of advice um, online in terms of learning how to program. You have your pet project. Now, I have a pet project that even to this day when I'm bored, I just open it up and I see, okay, what have I learned since the last time I worked on this thing that can help me refactor it into better practice Ruby. The first time, it, right, the program was, it's a <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons dice roller, which is funny because I've never played Dungeons and Dragons before, but I thought, okay, I've got to do something, dice roller. It just came to mind, I was like, okay, well, let's run with it. So when I first sat down to do this project, I was like, okay, I wanted to do this, and 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 I laid out all my features, and then I attempted to concurrently work on all the features at the same time, essentially. I mean, some things have to be developed before others, but it was like, okay, I wanted to do this, and so I'll build this, and oh, hey, I also need to do this, so I'll go over here and do this. I didn't make it simple for myself. What I should have done with a project like this is say, oh, I want to do a dice roller where I can literally only pick one dice and roll it, and then figure out how can I take two dice and roll them, and then build that up. It took me like a month and a half and 300 lines, the most beautifully ugly Ruby code you've ever seen, to hack out something that worked. And it was kind of a cool feeling when it worked, but it wasn't tested and it wasn't really maintainable. So I, I, I kind of violated the principles that I've laid out. It wasn't simple. I was not focused. And when I was working on it, I, I wasn't basing my project on something somewhat similar. I was doing something completely original. And so I didn't really have someone to talk to walk me through, you know, roadblocks along the way. <clears throat> so, yeah, covered those. Um, I'll go back one step. So, now I'll take a pet project that I followed that kind of pattern of keeping it simple and focused and giving myself a way that I could go and ask questions and get answers. I walked through the Michael Hartle Rails tutorial. I think it teaches you how to build a blog. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Anyway, so I, I went through that whole tutorial, felt pretty good about it, said, okay, well, let's do the best we can to actually just build the exact same thing that he did once from memory, and you know what, I'll leave out all these other features. Let's just make it the blog. Give me a page where I can create an entry and it displays the entry. So I did that, and I had to go back a couple times to reference it, but just the act of going through something familiar solidified some concepts. So I said, okay, let's make a blog again, iteration two, except this time, you know what, I don't have a lot of experience including gems in my project, so let's include the Twitter bootstrap gem for some styling. So I built the exact same blog again, except this time I included a gem and I pulled in styling. And then I iterated a third time. I built the exact same blog, so like I'm doing this repetitive thing, so I'm getting these basics really nailed into my mind. Wrote memory. Um, and now let's, let's build an authentication system. And this was keeping it focused and keeping it simple. And the times I ran into roadblocks, it was about this time that I discovered Stack Overflow. You know, I'd, I'd hit a problem, 
oh, Google, please save me. And like the first five things that would come up would be Stack Overflow. And I'd be able to go on and realize, hey, this person had the same question as I did. And then down below, there would be some kind soul who decided to answer that question. And that really helped me feel like, OK, well, like, I don't know everything about Rails, but I know this specific set of things about Rails. And I'm getting pretty familiar with it. And I'm starting to gain that confidence to be able to bring in other things to it as well, to add complexity, but in a way that stretches me to comfort without causing me distress or feeling like I'm a failure. Interestingly enough, <coughs> going on to Stack Overflow began to develop this sense of community, which is the last point I want to talk about today. Um, community is really important. Uh, on my Twitter feed, I follow people like Sarah May, um, Katrina Owen, um, a number of people who have begun to really push the importance of, you know, we, as we bring new programmers into the environment, we don't need to coddle them, but we need to help them feel like they're a part of something. And that largely happens by developing, a, you know, giving them a community to belong to. Uh, as I was working on projects, you know, random projects of my own, and I'd come across a problem and I'd go to Stack Overflow, I began to see that there were, you know, there were some people who were just really diligent about answering questions, the same people answering questions. And I began to be, I began to feel like I was a part of this community. Even though I wasn't contributing, like I was not giving answers because I wasn't there yet, I still felt like, oh, these are, these are people who have similar struggles and these are people who care enough about these struggling people to help them. And I'm part of that group. So now I feel like I have a place I can go and have my questions answered. And sure enough, you know, a few months later, I had a question that I couldn't find an answer to on Stack Overflow, asked the question. About an hour later, someone was kind enough to, to address that and, and give me an answer. It's just a really good feeling. Um, some other forms of community include this meetup group right here. Um, before I came to Cincinnati, I was in Boston, which I've come to learn has like tons and tons and tons of Ruby and Rails and web development meetups. And I really missed out because I was in Boston at the time I started learning. I didn't even think to look at that. Uh, one of the first things I did when I came to Cincinnati was find out, okay, where's, where's the nearest Rails or Ruby user group? And I found this. I've been attending now for about a year. Um, some talks I've gotten a lot out of. I think the first talk uh, I was here for was something, do I see him here tonight? I thought I just saw him walk by. Rob? Yes. He was the first talk I, I heard when I came to this group. And I was like white knuckled through the whole thing. I was like, oh my gosh. If this is what these meetups are like, I'm not going to get Jack. Like, I'm not going to get anything from them. But something like, something was like, no, you need to be a part of this group. And as I've continued to attend, as I've heard presentations, as I've talked with other individuals, it hasn't necessarily helped my ability to program something effectively. But I know that I have a group of people that are, who have a similar interest and are in the same boat as me, such that if I ever did need to reach out, I'd probably get help. And that's a, you know, that is another one of the things that helps motivate someone who's new to programming, having that kind of support group uh, behind them. So. Um, also, online forums and pair programming. I've done a little bit of pair pro programming and had positive experience with it um, and look forward to when I can do more of it. But bring this back full circle. Um, at the beginning, I said that Peter Cooper lied to me. Now, if you read the intro to his book, he says that you're really only going to get anything out of what he's written if you practice and practice and practice. Um, I, I personally like to believe that the title of the book was a suggestion by his editor. Hey, we need this to fly off the shelves, so we're going to give it a catchy title that makes it sound like a person can learn Ruby programming in 24 hours, even though it doesn't make that claim. But it, you know, it kind of feels that way. What I've learned from my personal experience as a new programmer is that to be successful, I need quick wins. And those quick wins come from setting up systems that 
give me something familiar and then stretch me a little bit and I have some kind of resource that enables me to ask questions and get quick answers. And that, I believe, is what new programmers need to learn to program. Thank you. Any questions? No. Um, so I was doing solar installation gigs, and I ended up with a really bad injury to my shoulder and just really bad tennis elbow in both my arms. So I was out of solar installation, and well, I I had no clue. I even at that point I was like, I, programming was not even on my radar. Uh, my oldest brother is a Rails developer, and as I was chatting with him, he said, you know. You may like it, you may not, but just look into it. And something this whole time, even through like the really hard times, something this whole time has just driven me to move forward and, and continue with Rails development. So I had no foundational programming understanding before I then tried to jump into Ruby and Rails. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, so Code Wars is actually one of my favorite ways to learn Ruby syntax, like learn some of the Ruby syntax that exists out there. Um, actually, have you, has anyone here seen Code Wars? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you gotta prove your work first. That's right. They do like a little bit of like code snippet, and you gotta fix the errors in it. I wonder, I love it. <laughs> let's see. Let's go to it really quick. Let's see if, you, you have seen this? Okay, yeah, so what I found it's good for is I may know how to do something a really long way and roundabout way, like I can hack it out, but it's just really not very pretty. And so when you work on an exercise, you have to pass tests that they have built into it. You write your code, you submit, if it passes the tests, you then get to see the hundreds upon hundreds of other responses that people have submitted and it allows for some kind of upvoting system such that what's considered best practices or perhaps really efficient or most clever float to the very top of the, of the answers that you see. And so a lot of the things that I now know, like a lot of the methods that I now know, I didn't before, but by doing multiple Code Wars exercises, I was like, oh, this seems to be in a, like an emerging pattern of how you accomplish this specific thing. And so I've worked uh, with Code Wars a number of times. Just really a, a positive experience overall. Um, another thing that's similar to it is, I navigated away from it, it's called Exorcism IO. It's, yeah, it, I see a lot of nodding heads. Um, it's similar, although it's command line based. So you download the exercises, work on the exercise, get them pass, upload it up, and then it gives other developers an opportunity to come in and nitpick what you've done. So you can upload some really ugly code that works and there will sometimes be a kind soul who decides to say, you know what, that works, but if you do it this other way, it's more efficient or it's better practice to, to use this route. It's really cool. Any other questions? I'd plug one more time too, because yeah. it's available in a whole lot of different languages. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that really helps um, if you're trying to learn a new language. If it, you've done an exercise in one language, you can then see what the similarities and the differences are. So, anything else? All right, well, thank you for your time tonight.